Hello and welcome to j lesson on Alkene, suitable for all exam boards, but specially tailored for OCR F322. This is going to be a long video, I think, so please look at the description and click on the one topic that you want to focus on. So, um, the first thing that we remember, if you remember from the hydrocarbons um, video, is that we have these crude oil a mixture of long chain hydrocarbons and we crack it in well we fractional distillate it into smaller chain ones but we usually end up with long chain hydrocarbons which we don't really need I mean there's so much you can do with longer chain hydrocarbons so we crack it to make shorter chains and the best thing about it is that we make a byproduct called an alkene okay in this um, in this uh, example we make ethene which is C2H what is it well the general formula for an alkene is CNH2 uh, yeah CNH2M so that means for every um, carbon that we have we have two hydrogen atoms and therefore we have four now let's just calculate the remaining um, carbon and hydrogen atoms we've got. 8 minus 2 is 6, 18 minus 4 is 14. You can be assured that this will be a shorter chain alkane um, with its CNH2N plus 2. As you can see, this fulfills the formula. Um, we'll be focusing on alkenes today, so don't worry about that. So let's have a look at ethene. The key fact about alkenes is that it's an unsaturated compound. That means we've got this double bond to help us attach other stuff to it. With alkanes, it's saturated, so we can't really add stuff to it without getting rid of something else. But we can add whatever we want. Usually it's a group 7 or a halide or a hydrogen, but we'll come to that later. And this is the best thing we can use for it. Um, alkanes usually has a C to C double bond somewhere. So that means even though we can have this, even though we've got single bonds over here, this double bond automatically makes it an alkene. And that's very important to remember that. So this would be, um, this would be an alkene. And it will also go different types of reactions than alkanes. Alkanes usually go for substitution reactions because we can't really add stuff to it because it, its bonds are all filled up. But over here, we can go through electrophilic addition, which is also going to be my other video. And yeah, other things that you just need to notice is that this, um, due to the electron pair repulsion theory, uh, which is on unit one and in a different video. This is a trigonal planar shape. If you think about it, it looks a bit like an eye, like a tripod, and that means the um, the angle is 120 degrees. And this is trigonal planar, okay? Because we can put it on our piece of paper. So naming alkenes. If we had uh, one, two, we have got two carbon atoms here and if you remember from our other video about our canes if you look here the prefix is eth so we have eth but the only difference between uh, this one is that we had an ane at the end of it but over here because it's an alkene we use ene okay the clue is in the name please don't get them mixed up you can lose marks what about if we had this? This is called propene. Okay, I'm not drawing the hydrogen because, because I'm sure you know where the hydrogen is supposed to go. Uh, this is called propene. Even though the um, even though the double bond is only at one of them, we only got one double bond. We just call it propene. If we had two double bonds here, we'll call it propdiene because di means two. So we have two double bonds here, it will be called propdiene, like that, propdiene. Um, if we had this, this is called 
but one in. Okay, because we can put this bond over here and make it but two in. There are different structural isomers related to carbon atoms, well, to a hydrocarbon chain, which is more than three carbon atoms. Okay, so over here, even if we had just one carbon, if we just had one double double bond here, if you put it here, it will still make propionine, so we don't need the one. So, let's have a look at this one. This is a cyclo compound because it's a cycle. And this is called cyclo, one, two, three, four, five, six, cyclohexene. Because we've got a double bond here, we could also call it cyclohex one in technically that is the correct way to say it because nah 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 you don't really need to put the one in because if you put this anywhere else it would still be one in okay because we can start the carbon chain we can start numbering it from anywhere we want to so cyclohexene is the one if we had uh, another double bond here another double bond there we would call it cyclo one three Five, try in because try means three. Now, how do these double bonds actually form? Well, this bond over here, which you might have neglected, is because of the orbital overlap between these carbon, well, or orbitals basically. They share an electron each, and therefore we end up with two electrons, and we call this bond a sigma bond. Over here, um, if you've noticed, we've got one, two, three. We don't have a fourth one. So we have a p orbital left over from this. Oh, I can't draw a p orbital properly. A p orbital from here. And what basically happens, right? What basically happens is, oops, oops, hold on a second. Hold on one second, there you go. What basically happens is that these two parts of the orbitals, they come forward, they lean towards each other, they lean sideways towards each other to make a sideways overlap. And it would end up looking like this. Okay, pretend we've got the C here. And the same thing happens to the thing on the bottom. It goes through a sideways overlap and it ends up like that. Remember, the orbitals all have a, an electron on there. Strictly speaking, okay, we can basically say that each part of the orbital has one electron. But we know that it's not true because electrons like to whiz around everywhere and we can have two, um, we can have two electrons here. We can have two electrons there at one time. It all depends, but each orbital has only two electrons, and that's important. So it overlaps here, and obviously we are sharing our um, electrons. And we've got our sigma bond here, and this is called a pi bond. Okay, one way to remember it is that pi has got two legs, and so does the bond. Okay, good thing about this is that the electrons are really excited because they can move about, they jump about a lot. They jump about between this pi bond, even though these are this, this is a one pi bond, but they jump between this section here and that section there. Okay, it's very important that you remember that the electrons come as pairs, um, and that would be very important for our, our electrophilic addition reaction mechanism in the next video but that is it for this video